We have one lamb here today. Miss Avery Buell is here. Come up here and help me. Come right up here. You win a prize today. You're the shortest person here. <laughs> Congratulations. I would shake your hand, but I might have cooties. So you're having a new puppy at your house, and now I, I come home last night, and you don't even live at home anymore. Do you live with me now? What were you doing at my house last night? Spending the night. <laughs> but you weren't spending the night with Pops, were you? Who were you spending the night with? With Mimi. <laughs> Whose house is it? Is it Mimi's house? <laughs> you do win a prize though. I've got it in here. Doesn't look like there's anything in there. You win a prize for uh, the best pizza I ever ate. Did you eat my sausage and biscuits this morning? Huh? You did? Was that the only ones left? You spent the night. And Sissy's not here. Is she quit going to church? Does she have the coronavirus? Did she have a giggling girl spend the night party somewhere else? Where did she go last night? Where? To Emmy's house. Emmy's been here, hasn't she? So it's our time to go there, I guess. Maybe you, you and me need to go over there and spend the night. What do you think? You'd probably rather go to Mimi's. You fixed the very best pizza that I ever ate. I have a prize for you. We've been talking about a prize. Paul the Apostle said in the Bible in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says he's like he was running a race, and he says, I want to win a prize. And what he's talking about is, is he wants to do what God wants him to do. And God does give out prizes. <laughs> kind of like this. Hey, reach in there and get that prize out of there. What is it? You know what it is? It's pudding. <laughs> there's a, there's a, PowerPoint on the desktop there, Carter. It's about pudding. Bring that up there. Uh, that is a pudding snack. That's your prize. There's an old saying. There's an old saying and people say, the proof is in the pudding. You ever heard that? You haven't? You will hear it one day. They'll say, well, the proof is in the pudding. And that's wrong. That's, uh, that's got some chocolate in it and some milk chocolate and dark chocolate and, that, and you can have that's your prize. There's some, there, that's a, very much like that, what's right there. But the saying is not the proof is in the pudding. The saying is the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Somehow or another somebody just shortened it and wound up with half of it. The proof of the pudding, the proof is not in the pudding. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. In other words, you know it's pudding because you ate some of it. And then what that means is, is that we don't know if something's real or if it's good or if it's bad. We don't know anything about it until we've kind of tried it. The proof of the pudding is, in other words, you know it's good pudding because you've had some. Now, I imagine that's some good pudding, but you won't know, and I want to report on that, okay? You let me know if that was good pudding. There's only one way that you can find out if that's good pudding. It's not because I gave it to you, and not because you had some before. The only way in the world to find out if that's good pudding or not is to eat it. Now here's a verse right here. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. You know what a lot of people say? Now this is going to be pretty deep. And this is going to be probably the lesson here at the end of the Lamb service is going to be deeper than you're ready for right now. But I'll tell it to you again later as you get taller. One day you'll be the tallest person here, like your mama. Some people say, God will never put more on you than you can bear. But that's not true. Because the Bible doesn't say that. 
That's kind of saying, you know, bad things happen to us sometimes, but nothing so bad is ever going to happen that we can't take it. But the Bible doesn't teach that. They use this verse of scripture right here. It's in the passage that I'm preaching on today. You've been having to listen to me preach lately, haven't you? I'm not going to ask you any questions about whether you like it or not. Let me just go on. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, the, will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. These people were being tempted to worship idols. They were being tempted to eat food that had been offered to idols. And Paul is saying here, there, that any time you are tempted to do something wrong, you can always say no. Anytime you're tempted to disobey the rules or disobey mommy or daddy, anytime you're, you're tempted to do wrong, God says, I'm going to give you a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. It's not saying that God will never put more on you than you will bear. Okay? As I said, that's pretty, pretty deep stuff. Thank you very much. But uh, you do have a prize. And I don't have any pudding. And I also don't have any sausage and biscuit anymore. <laughs> now, I noticed that all the leftover pizza was in a bag when I left this morning. You didn't take that home with you, did you? <laughs> you mean there's not any more? Did you not leave one piece behind at my house? Okay, go sit down. <laughs> okay, Danny, come and continue to lead us as we sing.